Hello there, welcome to part two of a uh, two-part series. So um, this one's on the 2D and 3D bump. Um, so if you um, are missing the first tutorial, you might want to go back and watch that. What we did basically is we created a, um, a texture and a bump um, for a surface. So let's go back, just take a quick look at what that looks like. And we'll go back and maybe just do a quick recap on the 2D bump. So let's open up the uh, Hypershade. Go to your window, Rendering Editors, and Hypershade. And here is basically all of the nodes um, that are connected to this sphere. So uh, what we want to do is just take a quick look back at the fractal. So I'm going to click on that in here. And we'll, let's go through one of these individually on the 2D, and then we'll move on to the 3D, uh, a 3D bump. So first we have the Place 2D Texture. And remember, this is where you find your attributes where you can rotate the frame a little bit or you can rotate the UV. Um, I'll do that now. I'm going to just put my render view over here and we'll sort of play with the rotate the frame. As you rotate your frame, you'll see it, it move to a different position over here. So you may have an image attached to um, you know, a sphere and that's how you'd rotate that. Or you can rotate the, v, the UV on it. So. Um, just something to be aware of um, at the moment. Usually the defaults are fine, but sometimes you might need to play around with those a little bit to get the look you want. So anyway, there it is. So let's do this. Let's go and check the, the fractal where you found all of your attributes for your fractal and then the bump 2D placement node where you can uh, increase your bump depth from here if you want. And that basically will give you a little bit more definition in your bump or the appearance of a bump, I guess I should say. Um, because sometimes with the 2D, um, it is just that. It, um, it renders out as a two-dimensional type of render, but you can see where you don't really have um, you know, any variance along the outer edge, the outer perimeter, so to speak. So anyway, just something to be aware of. Okay, let's get started on the bump 3D. I'm going to come over here to the hypershade and I'm just going to basically clear the graph. So let's move that up here and we'll do clear graph and that puts it all back into here. Now if I wanted to see the attributes and work on those again, a really easy way to do that is just to click on my Lambert 4 in here and then go to graph and then let's look at the input and output connections and that basically gets you back to this point so now you can start you know working on some of these various other notes. Okay, so right now we'll go graph, clear graph, and what I want to do is I want to create a bump 3D node. Now, one of the ways we're going to start is just using the simple Lambert. So I'm going to click on one of those, and this time coming down here, I'm just going to leave the 2D texture as normal like that. But what we're going to do is we're going to go and choose a 3D texture underneath this 3D texture tab, and in this case, I think for the time being, I'm just going to try a solid fractal. That's sort of a standard. And you can try out some of these other ones like stucco or wood or something like that on um, messing around with it. So I'll choose fractal. Now, I'm going to move this over and we're going to see we have basically the same thing that happened with our 2D. So let's just line those up and take a look at those. Okay, so we have our solid fractal one. Let's just make the connection now and we'll assign it to our object, uh, the plane, in just a second. So middle mouse button on top of the solid fractal, hover over the top of your Lambert 5 and drop it on the top there. And when you drop it, you should get this, um, this menu. Keep your menu up by moving the hand into there and move down to the bump map and we're going to assign it right there. So I'm going to click on the bump map and voila, it is now assigned. So. That's what that's our Lambert 5. All right, so we can do one of two things here. We could um, choose our our plane over here and we could drag and drop this Lambert 5 onto the plane or we can click on the plane and we can come over here and we can go to assign existing material Lambert 5. You can do it either way. I usually use a combination of both. Sometimes I need precision, so I might choose the uh, right mouse button option. So just something to know. Okay, well, as you can see, it has basically dropped that texture onto our surface. So um, a lot of times you might wonder, do I need to use 2D? Do I need to use 3D? And you know, 3D is always computationally more expensive. So 
um, you kind of have to pick and choose what area you're looking at and what area needs real three-dimensional detail because most of the time you know a simple 2d bump can work but as you can see here we've assigned a I'm gonna go back into my object mode and this is our plane and if I come up here I'm gonna move this up just a little bit so we can see something here move this up here you'll see that when I add a 3d bump node um, the 3d is, is right here this is the 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 texture where it starts to appear so that is essentially our our 3d texture now it looks like we can move and scale it so we we, we can do some various things with that to make this um, you know adjust this appropriately for what we need so just something to keep in mind I'm gonna do a quick render and let's take a look at what our default um, our default is I'm gonna bring my render view window over here and that's what we had before and this is now now what we have we can see the beginnings of a surface starting to come in there so let's play around with that and try and refine that surface and get some more detail in it um, I'm gonna leave this over here for the moment and we're gonna come back into the hypershade take a look at a couple of things let's click on our solid fractal and you'll notice that the properties show up over here in the tab section so we'll come over here and work with our, our uh, threshold a little bit like we did before so go ahead and, and let's look at that surface um, oh, but you'll notice when I click that surface it reverted back to Lambert 5 because that's what I, I don't want Lambert 5 so I'm gonna come back over here into my solid fractal and I'm gonna click on that and now we can play around with the threshold a little bit I'll just bring that threshold up quite a bit and let's see what happens it looks like it sort of smears the surface so if I take a render now, eh, it's not doing much for me. So anyway, we can kind of see what it's doing. It's, it's basically evening out that service. So let's just bring our threshold down here a bit and let's play around with the amplitude now. Let's say we set this amplitude down. Um, I can see where it's sort of decreasing its effect and essentially we still have just sort of a, a mediocre looking surface there. So let's crank up our amplitude and let's bring our threshold up a bit more okay and now let's look at our ratio the ratio is going to affect basically how much um, you know how much or how little of a bump is in there and if I move it down to this level I can see where it's not really you know it, it's 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 not showing up in my render over here um, and we're gonna fix that I'm gonna bring this over here and we're gonna because right now it doesn't really have a light that's scraping across there so let's try creating a light real quick um, let's just go to create lights and let's just maybe do a, a, a point light I'm gonna bring on a point light there and I'm gonna grab this point light bring it up a little bit and move it all the way back to somewhere in there maybe somewhere right in there okay now let's take another quick render You'll notice that now we can kind of see a little bit what's happening with that. It's still not right, but we're going to mess around with it some more. So come back over into the hypershade and we're going to look at a couple of things here. Let's look at our place 3D texture and that basically tells us where the placement is. And we have a solid fractal and here are our, here's our basic uh, starting point here's our bump 3d if I click on that this will give us a depth well let's move this depth up a little bit now let's say we move the depth from one to say like four okay you can notice where it did change over here inside of there and let's move it up even a little more let's maybe move our bump depth up to eight okay so now we're getting a little more bump all right so now let's take a look at this Lambert 5 uh, excuse me let's take a look at our, our solid fractal and um, let's let's increase our let's let's look at a couple of things here our threshold let's bring our threshold up a little bit now let's bring our threshold down there we go and let's bring our ratio down a little bit all right and maybe all the way up you can see what's happening over there it's it's basically changing accordingly to what we're doing there and let's take a quick render and just sort of see where we're at 
Okay, so now you can see some more detail happening in there. And, um, you know, it's basically the way of working with a, a 3D, 3D uh, bump. So there you go. You don't really have to be too concerned with some of these other, um, necessarily any of these other uh, options. Um, for the most part, you're going to be working with these for, for the moment anyway. And let's just take a look at our place 3D texture. Eh, everything's looking good. Okay, so now let's do one last thing. Let's go to this plane right here, and we know that that has the Lambert 5 um, as its, uh, as its uh, there's a Lambert 5. Okay, now let's try something. Let's do to the color channel what we did with the 2D bump. Let's assign an image um, that's basically like a stone texture or lunar texture or something like that. I'm going to go ahead and click on that, and I'm going to open the file. And in this case, it's going to ask me, what do I want? My image name is going to be, in this one, I have a really cool photo. It's just Pancake 1, I think. Yeah, there it is. Pancake 1. So it's just a JPEG, a high-resolution JPEG. So I'm going to choose that. Okay. As you can see, it uh, dropped that picture onto there. And uh, that gave us some sort of, like... No, what, what would you call it? A, yeah, it looks like a pancake. <laughs> okay, so basically that's just mapping a pancake to that uh, that at, to the color attribute. So I'm going to come back over here, and you can kind of see what's happening. I'm going to scroll out a little bit, and let's just move our nodes around here so we can see what's happening. That's a light, so I'll put that light there. So there you have it. Um, there's some variables involved with um, with using the uh, 3D bump node, and there it is. So just to recap, um, we put a 3D texture that was a solid fractal onto um, a bump, okay? And the bump we put onto the Lambert 5 in its bump channel. And then we placed a texture, basically this pancake, uh, this, this pancake picture on top for some color. So there you go. Um, you could fool around with this all day now. Uh, you could basically lower your, for example, if I click on this file too, um, well, let's, let's click on the uh, Lambert 5. Um, I can control its ambient color a bit from, from here. So if it's too light or too dark, I can basically control some things from there. Um, let's say let's say we want to look at uh, the, the, the translucence or the diffuse value. The diffuse I can bring down a bit so that might be a little better um, by bringing that diffuse level down. We'll take a quick render and in there you'll see it still it might be because this light is too bright um, I'm going to try moving this light back a little bit. Let's uh, move our render out. Let's move back in the scene. This light right there, I might want to just decrease its intensity a little bit. So let's try something like that. All right. Now we'll click a quick render. And you will notice that computationally your computer will slow down a little bit more when you start using 3D textures because they're a little bit more computationally expensive so so there you have it um, that's sort of the best of just uh, beginning basics of these two so play around with those a lot um, you'll learn a lot and um, they'll they'll help you out greatly in the future when you're trying to you know assign some textures to surfaces so works a lot better than just a standard image so and generally there's specific ways you um, prepare your textures before bringing them in um, and using them but for the moment that's the concept that we're after here so enjoy and I hope you had a great time on this one and stop back for the next tutorial and uh, as always read a book <laughs> learn something okay thanks for watching